Hey y'all, for today's video, I'm gonna be doing something a little bit different. I'm gonna be sharing some of the lunches that I have been making for myself. Now, typically I am a warm up some leftovers for lunch type of girl, but I just got to thinking, you know, I am always planning lunches for my kids and husband, but I never do that for myself. So for this specific video, I took the time to plan some lunches that only I would eat. These are not things that my family would typically eat. I wouldn't do that for dinner time, but you know, I'm home alone five days out of the week around lunchtime, so why not? It was really nice, and I truly enjoyed every recipe that I'm going to be sharing in this video. So let's go ahead and jump on into the first one. I recently got a comment on here saying that I don't fix spaghetti squash anymore, and you're so right. It has been a really long time since I have, and spaghetti squash is one of those things that I honestly truly love. So thank you for that comment because it was honestly my inspiration for making this whole video. So I'm going to share probably my favorite recipe for spaghetti squash is a cheesy garlic parmesan spinach version. Um, if you've watched me for a long time, you've probably seen me make it in the past. Um, so I just have a small spaghetti squash here since it is just me. And I got that cut in half. I took a spoon and I scraped out all of the seeds and strings in the middle. It can be a bit of a headache to cut a spaghetti squash in half since they are so hard at first. Just make sure that you have a really sharp knife and be extra careful. I did rub the inside of the spaghetti squash down with some olive oil, just rubbed it in with my hands, and I always like to season mine with some garlic salt and some black pepper. I'm just getting it cut side down on a parchment lined cookie sheet, and I'm going to roast it at 400 degrees for 40 minutes. So here's what it should look like when you take it out of the oven. I'm just going to let that slightly cool, and I'm going to get started on the sauce that completely makes this dish. So to a large skillet. I've added just a little bit of olive oil. I have minced up just a couple cloves of some fresh garlic, added that into the hot oil, and I'm just going to saute it for just a couple of minutes until it smells nice and fragrant. I took a five ounce container of some fresh spinach, and I just gave it a really quick chop, and I'm going to add all of that into my skillet. And I'm just going to saute that for a few minutes in with the garlic and the oil. And it's going to start to wilt down super quickly, and it's going to look like you've added barely any spinach in there, but I promise you that it is plenty for this recipe. Next, I'm going to add in a half a cup of some Parmesan cheese that I shredded up myself. I'm also going to add in a half a cup of some heavy whipping cream. And then I'm going to do about a tablespoon of some cream cheese. Philadelphia is my favorite brand. And I'm just going to continue stirring this for a couple of minutes, basically just until that cream cheese is completely melted. And then lastly, I'm just going to hit it with some salt and some black pepper to taste. And I just let that simmer for, you know, a few minutes. And that is all there is to this sauce. Very easy, very quick. And by that point, the spaghetti squash, it's still going to be pretty hot, but it should be, you know, fine enough to handle. But, you know, I'm pretty used to doing that. Uh, but if you're not, just use some oven mitts to help you. But I'm just taking a fork and I'm just scraping the sides away from like the shell and um, I'm not doing it like perfectly I'm just you know doing it enough to my liking and as you can see it kind of resembles spaghetti noodles like on the inside so that's where it gets its name but it definitely doesn't taste like spaghetti noodles don't let anybody lie to you there but if you've never had it before and you're curious what it tastes like I mean, it is kind of hard to explain, but it just has a very mild taste, and it's basically going to taste like however you choose to flavor it up. So, I basically can just taste like the, you know, cheesy spinach, kind of almost Alfredo flavor, um, but it's got a really nice texture to it, so... Anywho, as y'all seen, I just took that sauce and I did my best to evenly distribute it between both shells and I'm going with my fork, kind of stirring it around just a little bit. Again, doesn't have to be perfect. And then lastly, I'm going to grab a bag of some shredded mozzarella cheese. I'm doing a nice layer over the top. I've lowered my oven to 350 degrees and I let that finish for 20 minutes and then I flip the ruler on for just a couple of minutes to get that nice golden brown topping that I just love. So this definitely has a 
a little bit of a long like prep time, kind of a long oven time. That's the only lunch in this video that is like that, but it is always a thousand percent worth it every single time that I make this. I promise y'all it is so delicious. And if you've never tried spaghetti squash before and you want to start with this recipe, I really think you'll enjoy it. Something that I have always wanted to do is make a bacon weave. I think that it is such a fun idea and I had a half a package of bacon left over in my fridge anyways. So this is how I wanted to use it up. So I just cut it in half and I'm not going to be the best at explaining this. So I'm just going to set it to some music and I'm going to drop a Pinterest tutorial in my description box. After doing the first one, I pretty much got the hang of it and it really is not as intimidating as it may seem. So as you can see, I got three of those and I got four random strips on the side. I'm going to pop it in the oven at 400 degrees. It can take anywhere from 20 to 30 minutes, just depending on your oven. Now I'm going to grab this beautiful tomato that came from my dad's garden. I washed it really well, but he grows the absolute best tomatoes and it is one of my favorite things about the summertime. These just do not compare to the store bought. They taste so delicious. And yes, I'm talking about summer and it is now technically fall. Let's just say this video has <laughs> took a while to come together. But as you can see, I'm taking a paper towel and I'm just dabbing the tomatoes on both sides, just trying to get off all that excess moisture so that this doesn't become like a huge mess. I'm also wiping down my cutting board because I haven't mentioned it yet, but I am gonna be using these large tomato slices as the bread. So I always season my tomatoes with some salt and black pepper. It really brings out the flavor, makes it so much better. And then here I'm just showing you what that bacon looks like once it comes out of the oven. Mine did take closer to 30 minutes, which is a longer than it would be like normal, but in this shape, it just took a little bit longer. I did drain it off on some paper towels, so now it's going to hold its shape and be nice and crispy. So now I'm going to assemble this the way that I like it. I'm just adding some Duke's mayo. I added quite a bit, to be honest. I'm just getting that spread out, and if I had some lettuce, I would have added it, but I'm not going to go and run out to get it just for this one sandwich, but that bacon weave turned out so beautiful. Um, I'm adding my other slice of tomato, and then I'm getting it seasoned on the other side. Now... I just took a piece of parchment paper and folded it over and now I'm just folding it up kind of restaurant style so that, you know, it's not going to be messy and it's going to be a lot easier to handle. And I had no issues with that. It worked out perfectly. I think that this is beautiful. Um, it's low carb, even though that's not what I'm going for. I just made it because it looked and sounded really good and it was absolutely delicious. I could see me doing this all the time in the summer when those homegrown tomatoes are coming in. It is a great way to use those up. Super, super good. Something else that I personally really enjoy but don't have all that often is cauliflower. Um, I came across something that looks super appetizing to me on TikTok for some cheesy cauliflower steaks, as they call it. I also found the recipe on Pinterest, so I will definitely link both in my description box just in case anyone else is interested in making this. But I just have a small head of cauliflower here that I washed first, and then I took all the leaves off the bottom, and I'm just kind of trimming it up on the bottom to make it look a little bit nicer. Now I'm just going to cut the head of cauliflower in half and then I'm gonna cut each half in half. Now, I thought that I was gonna end up with four pieces out of this head of cauliflower, but where it was so small, the other half just kind of crumbled, which is fine, nothing went to waste. And I ended up with these two beautiful slices of cauliflower. I transferred on it on over to a parchment lined cookie sheet and now I'm making the marinade, I guess you would call it. Um, the original recipe does call for four slices, so I am cutting it in half. So I've got two tablespoons of olive oil, a quarter teaspoon of onion powder, garlic powder, and paprika. I season it to taste with some salt and pepper. And then I just did a tablespoon of some Parmesan cheese, just the stuff out of a bottle, and then I mix that together really well. So I have a silicone brush here, and as you can see, I am just brushing it all over the cauliflower. I'm brushing it all over the top, the bottom, and like the front of the florets, I guess is how you would say that. Um, and I'm going to be doing this in the oven at 400 degrees. I'm going to roast it for about 20 minutes. 
but you could also do it in the air fryer. You could also grill it, which I think is a really fun option to get that nice like char on it. So now that I got those to my liking, I'm going to pop it in the oven. And then here is what they look like after the 20 minutes. Um, I'm going to grab some shredded cheese and add that over the top. The recipe does call for mozzarella, but all I had on hand this day was some sharp cheddar, which I think really paired nicely with it. I pop that back in the oven for just a few minutes to melt the cheese. And I don't know about y'all, but I think that that looks super appetizing. And I love the cheese that gets baked on the parchment paper. I just pick it up and eat it like chips and it's the best thing ever. So I paired it with some leftover wings that we had for dinner the night before. I got those from Save-A-Lot in a big bag. I just had to cook them in the oven and they were super good. They were seasoned really well. And then as for the cauliflower, it was absolutely delicious. My only like critique though, I feel like the stock was a little bit difficult to eat. So next time I would probably just roast it the regular way. Um, but the seasonings and the cheese was all on point. I do recommend it. Lastly, I'm going to be making a creamy pesto spinach mac and cheese. So I'm going to start by boiling up a cup of some elbow macaroni noodles. I'm just cooking that in some salted boiling water, just going by the directions on the box. And then to the side in a separate pot, I'm going to start making the sauce. So I'm melting down a tablespoon of butter and I'm adding in a tablespoon of just some plain all-purpose flour. And with my silicone whisk, I'm just going to Cook those two things together down for a few minutes. This step is just going to thicken up the sauce. So the recipe did call for regular milk. I was out. So in those cases, I always have some evaporated milk in my pantry. And evaporated milk goes so good in mac and cheese recipes. So I added in a cup, continued stirring. And as you see, it started to thicken up pretty instantly. So at this point, I'm going to add in some Parmesan cheese. I'd say I added in about a quarter of a cup. And I'm just going to continue stirring until that cheese blends perfectly in with the sauce. Takes very little time. And then I'm going to grab my jarred pesto. I've had that in my fridge for a bit. That was my inspiration for making this recipe. Um, I just did two like big spoonfuls of it. I absolutely love pesto. I love any recipe that calls for it. So I'm just going to... Get that blended in with the sauce and then I'm going to season it to taste with some kosher salt and some black pepper. I did have some spinach in my freezer. I've had it in there for a bit. Um, I just popped that in the microwave. I just steamed it according to the directions on the bag. Frozen spinach does have a lot of excess moisture in it though so you definitely want to make sure to squeeze that out. I used a strainer and some paper towels, um, and then I just added in my cooked and drained pasta in with that sauce. Um, my heat is off at this point. I don't need it anymore, and I didn't need that whole bag of spinach for this amount of pasta, so I only added in about half of it, and I'm just stirring it together, and it is done. That was very quick to throw together. I think that it looks delicious. And y'all, it was. This was so, so good. Definitely exceeded my expectations. I loved it. And I think it would be a great side dish with dinner as well. I ate this over two days and it was two big portions. So anyways, that's all I got for y'all today. If you like these types of videos, definitely let me know. I'd be happy to make more. I want to thank y'all so much for watching and I will see y'all in my next video.